we're out here working on the blue car again, and we're into more interesting stuff today. That's right, we're on the hunt for more power. Now specifically, at least today anyways, we're on the hunt for lost power. Power that this car should have, but doesn't. The OM617. Fairly simple engine. Now, what we're going to look for with power, since this is a diesel, diesels need fuel to make power. More fuel means more power as long as you have enough air to burn that fuel completely. First thing we would want to look at anytime you're buying one of these cars or if you own one of these cars and you have a strange running problem, power problem, it doesn't have power, is fuel filters. Because if you're not getting enough fuel, you're not making power. So fuel filters are the first most obvious solution. And since the way these work, they're a suction fed system. So right down here, let's get the camera way down in the depths. That's the downside to having a big camera is it doesn't fit in here very good. So this device right here is our lift pump. This plastic thing you see here that you can push on, that is the primer pump. But this device that the primer pump screws into that has this hose and this hose coming in and out of it is our lift pump. And what it does, it sucks the fuel all the way from the tank and then pressurizes it into the injector pump. So the inlet is on the rear side of that lift pump. So tracing that back, now yours will look different because I added a great big massive goldenrod uh, screen filter down here because we have had such fits with fuel quality around here um, with several stations having algae in their tanks and stuff. So this filter is the first filter. It's the primary filter. Most of them have just a little itty bitty uh, plastic filter, has like an elbow built into it, and it will go in between this rubber hose on the back of the lift pump and this hose from the fuel tank. Then from there comes out of the lift pump in this, which goes into this fitting right here. And then this is a spin on secondary filter as it's called. From there, it travels out of this fitting into the injector pump. Right here is what's called an overflow valve. It has a ball and spring in it to maintain a set pressure inside of the injector pump so that the elements will fill properly and quickly. From there, it comes back along here through what is called the cigar hose and then returns back to the fuel tank. There is also one more filter of sorts in the tank itself. It's called the tank strainer. That's going to be for another video because I don't really feel like taking a shower in diesel today. So we're going to look at some of the other things, see if we've got issues there, and then we'll move on to the tank strainer if one of these other simple fixes doesn't work. So with these filters, the primary filter is going to catch all your junk mainly. Keep a spare primary filter. You definitely want a spare primary filter in your car at all times so that if you do get bad fuel you can swap that thing out and get back on the road. The secondary filter is less likely to plug up but it can and it's they're cheap enough that if the car is new to you or you start having a weird problem it's easy enough just swap new filters on and call it a day. Give it a try then then move on from there to more expensive more complicated troubleshooting methods. But these filters are new. This one, I mean, you can see the goldenrod filter down here. You can see it's clean. And this one, I just changed right around the same time I did the injectors. So not long ago. Now that we've got the fuel system figured out, let's look into our air system. So on this car, the air comes in through this cold air intake. It has a factory cold air intake because it is pulling from outside the engine bay. Comes through the air cleaner, through what is called the U-tube. 
Ha ha ha, look at that. The YouTube. Yeah, it's because it's shaped like a U, not because it's got cat videos on it. Um, into the turbo. This is the cold side of the turbo, the inlet and the outlet. So this is the pressurized side where it goes into the intake manifold. Now, we can't really see the hot side of the turbo because it's down in under the air cleaner. But from there, we have the manifold pressurized with usually around 10, 8 to 10 PSI as stock, up to 12 PSI is fine for stock turbo stop air everything but this little fitting right on the back of the manifold i don't know if i can even get it to where you can see it yeah right there this fitting comes off the manifold and let's trace this line up so see this line see where it's going let's follow it around you still with me here i don't even know if i'm still with me here so it comes around here keep following and it comes up here to this thing on the side of the firewall. That is the overboost protection solenoid. What it does is normally it is, I'm trying to think if I'm doing this right. It is normally open. So it allows pressure through. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong on that technical term, but normally this allows pressure through. And then if for some reason it detects an overboost condition, it shuts off and bleeds the boost to atmosphere. Do you want to tell people about the overboost solenoid? Well then, come on, tell them what you've got to know. So one side of it goes to the manifold where it receives pressure or a pressure signal, I guess you could say, from the um, manifold pressure. The other side, this line, comes out and goes to this funky looking little dude. This is what's called an ALDA. What this does is it is essentially an emissions control device. It limits the amount of fuel before you have boost. So what that means is that it prevents a big bomb of black smoke behind you if you romp on it leaving a stoplight and you don't have the turbo spooled up yet. So this can be adjusted. Uh, let me show you what one looks like that has not been adjusted because this one has been tampered with. George is coming with us. On my gray car, it has been tampered with in other ways, but this little cap has a rubber cap with metal on it. That little cap indicates that the Alda has not been tampered with. What we're curious about or what I'm curious about is back over here our overboost solenoid. I'm suspicious that this thing has either failed or is stuck or something is not working properly with it because I have great low end power and then it feels like there is no boost. What we're going to do is disconnect the lines and try and blow through it. This right here is a 12 millimeter on the Alda. Now watch because there are little crush washers on either side of this fitting. We don't want to lose those. See that little crush washer? Let's set it right up there in the air cleaner and then set our bolt up there. Now, it is quite common for these to get plugged up with soot um, because of the EGR. See, that's definitely soot. Um, because of the EGR system on these and It'll put soot into the intake where it will make its way into this line and plug the line up. So that is a possibility that that's what's happened here. I'm going to try and blow through this and see if I can tell if it's coming out in the intake or not. Doesn't feel very easy, that's for sure. Let's grab a wrench and take this fitting off of intake now keep in mind you're going to have the same thing those little crush washers over here so don't lose them because you need them that's kind of grunged up got some nasty deposits on there it doesn't have any george on it though Ooh, that is quite plugged up
we're going to need a little bit of brake clean to clean all this junk out. go. That looks much cleaner now. We'll do the same thing on our Alda side one. We're going to bypass the overboost solenoid just by connecting this directly together. There's a good chance that that overboost solenoid is clogged, clogged with soot. If we blow through this, Super easy. No resistance. Which is what we want. Bolt back in over here. Don't forget your crush washers. There we go. Okay, so that is temporarily set up bypassing the overboost solenoid so we can take this car for a drive now and see how it performs, if it's different, if it's better, if it's worse. Let's take it for a try. starting to get dark on me here. So to recap, if you've checked your primary filter, your secondary filter, and all of the boost tubes from your manifold to your overboost solenoid to your ALDA and everything is all hunky-dory there, then we're going to have to move on to other things as I'm going to have to do after the test drive that you just saw. It hasn't improved, which likely means that my tank strainer is clogged. So we've got the car up on some ramps, and next time you're gonna get to see me take a shower in diesel fuel. I mean, clean a tank strainer. So tune in for that next time. Thanks for watching.